Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're gonna do some exploration with our pal Rover. And while we're out there exploring space, we're gonna get to the bottom line about this cartographic module. I had received a comment that says, hey, the cartographic module only allows you to enter unknown space. For instance, if I were to take the piece Venisat 7 and try to change where it's going to an area of space that we haven't explored, it says, hey, this hex unit has to be analyzed before we can travel there. And it says space can be analyzed with a telescope or a cartographic module. Furthermore, the cartographic module itself says automatically analyzes adjacent space while on a voyage. It doesn't say the same hex tile, but a quick search on the Google says that the cartographic module only analyzes space for the hex that it's in. So we're going to figure out what's going on here. I surely hope that it does analyze the adjacent hexes. I mean, Look at the size of that telescope. You're telling me this doesn't analyze as much space as this? Really? This looks like it was bought from Radio Shack in 1987. This looks like the Hubble telescope. So we're definitely gonna get to the bottom line of it. And for our adventures, we've done a basic sort of rocket. The dupe in here only needs to sort of be behind the wheel as the rocket flies around space. The only real difference is on our little ventilation system, we added a battery. And that way, when there is no more carbon dioxide, the battery will store up juice and be able to run this little system whenever it needs to. Right now, it obviously can't keep up because everybody's been in there with their jet suits, spreading around carbon dioxide like there's no tomorrow. I might also need to add some food to make sure you know the dupes don't starve. There we go. Now it's going to be ready. You may remember from last episode where we put around a bunch of these heavy watt wires to connect all of our large power draws. Well, to get it connected to our main power spine, I just put the heavy watt wire joint plate right here. Somebody put in the comments and said, hey, you realize you didn't insulate your joint plate. And yes, I did realize it. And what they mean by that is all the heat in here now has an avenue to transfer with the environment out here. Well, when I fired up Ani today and did a quick temperature reading out here, I realized, oh, it apparently heats up the environment a lot more quickly than I expected. For temporary, we have the ugliest power run ever and have just ran the heavy watt wire through our little vacuum insulated area, and that way no temperature transfers from the inside of our sauna to the outside of our sauna, thanks to this vacuum. But let's be honest, this is ugly, and eventually it got to me and I said, you know what, we gotta fix this. Man, just like we gotta fix this. Can't have just Aaron power lines running everywhere. So what we're going to do is actually vacuum seal our heavy watt wire in, or rather have two heavy watt wire joint plates separated by a vacuum. And we've started off with just a smidge of petroleum here to create a liquid lock. Now remember, this is definitely not the liquid lock to last the test of time, but it works for now. And as you can see, this is a vacuum. So what we're going to do is put a heavy watt joint plate here and put a heavy watt joint plate here. And that way, these two heavy watt wires are sitting in a vacuum and will not transfer temperature. And basically, that involves putting a bunch of tiles everywhere and then digging through the tiles so that you can put down both of the heavy watt joint plates. Now we're in the process of removing this tile right here Thank you, Wonder Woman. So now we can put down one heavy watt joint plate here. And as you can see, this area is still a vacuum. Now that that heavy watt joint plate is completed, we can add another one right here. You'll note that you cannot build one side by side, which is really unfortunate because this build would look a lot cleaner otherwise. And there you have it. Now we have heavy watt joint plates connected in between, maintained the vacuum. So now we can actually start removing some of these tiles. Don't get too overzealous though. If you remove too many of them, you will break your vacuum. And that's why despite this probably being the most functional way to do it, it is definitely function over form because it's pretty ugly. Zero temperature transferring from here to the outside. All the meanwhile, we're able to extend our power spine. Now, full disclosure, there is actually a mod that allows you to have insulated joint plates. So this entire system would be replaced just by one insulated heavy watt joint plate. But you know I like pain and would prefer to only do things the way the developers intended. But if that sort of thing doesn't bother you, I highly recommend that mod because then you don't have to stare at this ugly, ugly setup for the rest of your game. The good news though is now we can remove this heavy watt wire that was coming through our entrance 
And let's be honest, it was probably uglier than the heavy watt joint plate system that we just used. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to introduce you to Abe. Abe might be the best rancher I've ever seen. Starting off with a plus nine to husbandry, they have two positive traits, one of them being animal lover, which is phenomenal. And then the other is uncultured, which is great because, yeah, they can't do decorating errands, but they get increased decor morale. And then they're negative. Might as well be a positive. Yeah, they stink at cooking, but they get increased food morale bonus. Welcome to Max Paradise, Aquaman. All right, the dazzling prototype six is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and crew it up. And this time it's gonna be the pilot Cersei that's gonna take the rocket out for a spin. Now we have a range of 20. And because we have a cartographic module, it's allowing us to move into these black spaces. But we wanna see if once we get here, if it's gonna analyze these adjacent tiles. So I think this tile will work perfect for our experiment. Apparently, Cersei did not show up dressed appropriately for the job, that is my fault. Let's uncrew the rocket, and then we can send Cersei back through. Please change out of your jet suit, Cersei. Thank you very much. And now we'll make sure that Cersei is no longer allowed to come through this entrance. But she is allowed to go to the rocket entrance in the Hall of Heroes. All right, Cersei's coming back through the correct entrance in her Atmo suit. And just like that, our fifth rocket of the game is heading off into space. So once we get Rover on a planetoid, it'll then be time to colonize it. And believe it or not, there's actually a few different ways to do that. The first is by using a pair of Trailblazer modules. The Trailblazer modules will allow you to put two dupes in their little trailblazer modules and land them on the colony. Once there, they can deconstruct their trailblazer module and that'll give them enough material to make one rocket platform. Once you have the rocket platform, you can land your rocket loaded with whatever you want on the colony and away you go. There's another method and that's using the orbital cargo module. And for the giggles, we'll go ahead and swap one trailblazer module with the orbital cargo module just so we can see how it looks. But essentially, the orbital cargo module can send cargo to a planetoid that you don't have a rocket platform on. So then you only need to send one trailblazer module, some cargo, namely some steel, that way you can build a rocket platform, and away you go. Okay, so mistakes may have been made. Someone failed to install the plumbing pipes for the wall toilet. I'm not going to point any fingers, but we'll go ahead and turn the rocket around and install the plumbing. I have a question. When a dupe is narcoleptic and nyctophobic, when they fall asleep due to narcolepsy, do they require light to sleep? So apparently all of our slicksters ate themselves to death. They kept eating the carbon dioxide and then producing some crude oil. Well, because we have the petroleum generator off, the liquid pump is not pumping the crude oil anywhere, which means they're all drowning. It helps if you don't look at it. Speaking of which, our petroleum boiler has gotten the metal tiles down between zero and two degrees, so I think it's about time to turn our petroleum boiler back on. I really love how simple this system is. Turn on the oil flow, and we start getting fresh petroleum. All right, the plumbing pipes have been installed. I'm not sure quite how yet, but we're going to blame a dupe for this. I just don't know which dupe yet. And Cersei is really excited to be here, and we'll reset our destination, and we'll be ready to go. Second time to the charm. Man, Cersei is not having a good time with this. Apparently, I'm trying to do everything I can to kill her. She's down to 827 calories, and I just got the starving notification, which we get every once in a while when dupes are running too far, but I got the unreachable food. Now, that's the scary one. And it's because, just like I predicted a few hundred cycles ago, I did not make sure that our new pilot is allowed to eat berry sludge. I wanted to highlight a couple of systems that I've been using for water backup. If you remember several episodes ago, we had this sort of automatic damming system to where when the water got this high, it would overflow into this sort of backup area. Well, as luck would have it, we're running a little low on water because none of our natural sources are producing right now and we're using a ton of it. So we needed access to that. And that's where this door comes into place. Whenever the water is below this level, it'll open this door. And by opening this door, it allows this backup water to slide into the tank. When the water gets full enough, it'll close the door and stop the flow. 
Another system that we're putting into place is with this hydro sensor connected to this vent. And what it's going to say is if the water is below this line, open this vent up and allow all of this polluted water to flow into the other tank. So we sort of have a secondary and tertiary measures to make sure that we always have water. This is just one way of doing it instead of having ye old giant tank on the side of your base. So here's the other configuration I was telling you about. This is the orbital cargo module and we have it loaded up with 800 kilos of steel. It does not require a cargo port loader. You select what you want and the dupes will come deliver it. In future episodes, I think we're gonna try colonizing a planet using the orbital cargo module. If for no other reason, just to try something new. This is the part of the game that some people sort of love to hate. Yeah, it's upgrade time. The super coolant in this thermo aqua tuner was not able to keep up with this petroleum's heat. So when all else fails, just add another thermo aqua tuner. Now, if you've never worked with side by side thermo aqua tuners, do not be intimidated. Just set them both up the same way you would, except the output on one thermo aqua tuner is just the input on the other and then hook them all to the same automation port. Now, because it's super coolant, we don't care how cold it gets. We're gonna set it at minus 100. Anything else, you need to be careful because remember, each thermo aqua tuner is gonna reduce the temperature of your liquid by about 14 degrees. And this is going to work. I've been running it for a few cycles and the coolant's coming in here at four to five degrees and leaving at about 30. So we have about five degrees of chill net that we're pushing into the system you may have noticed that we've ran some wire and that's because the one conductive wire wasn't going to be enough for two thermo aqua tuners so we connected it to our main power spine which with standard heavy watt wire was starting to hit the threshold that you want to get uncomfortable with so we are now going through the painstaking process of upgrading every last bit of heavy watt wire with heavy watt conductive wire and that'll give us up to 50 kilowatts of power draw on the power spine as opposed to when we were running regular heavy watt wire and that only goes to 20 kilowatts and yes we were even able to upgrade this while it was sitting in the vacuum oh and that little iron ore there don't worry about that little guy we're just gonna go to the conveyor loader and tell the auto sweeper to pick it up and there it goes and you may have remembered that we still have this heavy watt joint plate taking heat from our power brick and sending it to the environment. Fear not. In the next couple of episodes, we're gonna be turning this into a cold power brick, which means everything will freeze instantly. All the carbon dioxide, the polluted water, everything. Yeah, we're gonna to have to move the slicksters, but that's okay. So stay tuned for that. Well, the proof is in the pudding, as they say on the cartographic module. The dazzling prototype six has the cartographic module and you'll notice it's not scanning anything adjacent and that is despite the fact that both the item description and the database says it automatically analyzes adjacent space while on voyage i don't know if it's a bug i don't know if it's working as intended right now because of that nonsense i recommend not using the cartographic module it looks like it's time to send cersei home but i wanted to highlight how great the system is here with the addition of a battery. Even though this rocket only has one solar panel for 60 watts, it's sitting in space, so the engine's not giving it any power. And it is pretty much carbon dioxide free because of this battery sitting at around 10 kilojoules of power, ready and able to provide power for this little system here. So see, the phone's ringing. And here's the system working, gets rid of all the carbon dioxide, gas filter processes it, and the battery still has plenty of juice to spare. Even though our experiment with the cartographic module was not successful, we can still test out our rover. We're going to head over to Frigido and see what our boy rover can find out. Okay, see, what had happened was we were trying to self-cool these steam turbines. And unfortunately, with as hot as it was getting, when the gold volcano would go off, plus two thermo aqua tuners, the steam turbines would just get too hot, which means they wouldn't be as efficient. They would start clogging. So we've made another upgrade. This time, when the super coolant is done cooling this brick of ice, it's gonna come through and provide some chill for the steam turbines and then go all the way back around. So once again, we've reset up the whole super coolant system and we'll load some super coolant in. Another reason why it's good is because the thermo aqua tuners will be providing chill for this area over here too. In fact, a significant portion of rhyme no longer looks rhymish. All right, that looks much better. Now these steam turbines are crushing all that heat. Thermo aqua tuners are doing this job. Super coolant's already down to eight degrees. The dazzling prototype six has arrived into orbit over Frigido 
And because of that, Frigido is now showing up on our planetoid list. Additionally, you can now click on it and we get to see a sort of basic outline of how it looks. Now it's time to deploy old rover. To do that, we just go back inside the rocket, click deploy, or we can go to the star map. And from the star map, select the dazzling prototype and click deploy. Either way works. Now, when we're looking at the planet toy, we have to remember a couple of things. There's only so much rover can do. For instance, he can probably dig through this ice, but he's not getting through that abyssalite. So if we want to see a better image of what this planetoid looks like, we need to land rover somewhere he can actually get in. So I think this spot right here might be our best bet. Now I can already tell you we are going to be up a creek without a paddle for the simple reason there's a security door. And this security door requires a bioscan and only a duplicate can get through it. But we'll do what we can, so let's go ahead and land old rover. Oh, look at that. We're making entry. Here's rover! Buddy, where are you going? All right, step one for rover. Let's try to dig out some of this ice and work our way up. But if we try to dig into the abyssalite, you'll notice the little dew pat comes on because old rover doesn't have abyssalite digging. Great job, rover. Now, because you can't move rover around and you can't dig things in that you can't see, I'm hoping that by rover moving into this tile here, we'll actually open this up so we can continue digging. But just by rover landing on the planet, we've gotten a lot more visibility. In fact, there's the old Gravitas reception desk and the mighty office mug. Too bad it's not gonna be a terrestrial artifact. What kind of nonsense is that? All right, it does not look like Rover will allow his navigation to move into this tile. Now I can still dig this tile here, but I don't think it's gonna give us the full meat and potatoes. What if we deconstruct this tile? He still won't jump down. All right, we finally have Rover jumping down, but apparently Rover doesn't trigger the show me what else is here. And now I feel bad because I've destroyed some of the original architecture. And I like the original architecture. I try to leave it in most playthroughs. Now, unfortunately, I think this is all Rover can do for us. We'd normally be able to kind of dig down through here using some stairs. Unfortunately, Rover can't get to this point past the Abyssalite in order to be able to dig down. So while in this case, Rover didn't do a whole lot for us, he at least showed us what the initial landing might be for some dupes coming over to this planetoid. Now his objective is just to sit on this planet and die. I hate it as much as you do, but when duplicates come here, we'll build a nice fitting memorial for old Rover. And Rover 2? And Rover 3? All the Rovers. I did just realize something though. By landing Rover's lander here, it can be deconstructed and provide 400 kilograms of steel. Provide that with the 400 kilos of steel from the Trailblazer module, and you have yourselves a rocket platform without an orbital cargo module and without using the two Trailblazer trick. So once again, I know this episode didn't have a lot of protein, but there's so much that we need to accomplish as far as maintenance and getting everything ready for some very cool things in the future. Some of the things we got upcoming are the nuclear reactors, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, exploring and colonizing every last planetoid, and trying to find some pesky terrestrial artifacts. So I hope you enjoyed watching me play cleanup a little bit, and I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.